Don't miss this video, your life might depend on it. Seth Marchant with the Home Team Brokers here. If you're new to this channel, Living on the Oregon Coast, we show you what it's like to eat, sleep, play, work, all the pros and cons of living on the Oregon coast. And in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about tsunamis. If you wanna see more videos about living on the Oregon coast and what it's like to live there, make sure and hit the subscribe button, tap the bell, that way you'll be notified each time we drop a new video, which is every week. And if you're somebody that's thinking about moving to the Oregon coast, you can call, text, email, or you can click the link below in the description if you wanna schedule a Zoom with us, typically best for people that are coming from out of state. All right, so let's talk about tsunamis. Should you be worried about them? Uh, where are the tsunami zones? Where are the evacuation routes? Uh, how often do tsunamis happen? I'm gonna cover all that in this video. Now first, I'm not a geologist. Maybe that's probably obvious. Uh, I did know a little bit about this topic before the video, did some research uh, for the video so I know a little bit more, kind of scary some of the stuff you read, uh, but uh, I'm sure there's somebody out there that probably knows more than I do. If you're that person, if you're a geologist, if you know about uh, the Cascadia subduction zone, uh, if you know about tsunamis along the Oregon coast, feel free to weigh in uh, on the in the comments. All right, so first of all, what are tsunamis? Tsunamis are uh, a series of waves that are generated when the ocean floor below uh, displaces that water from something such as an earthquake. It can also be caused uh, from landslides or underwater volcanoes, but most commonly created from an earthquake. Tsunamis can uh, hit us on the Oregon coast locally, so from earthquakes that are just off the Oregon coast, or they can come from distant places like across the Pacific Ocean somewhere like such as uh, Japan. Earthquakes in Japan can actually create tsunamis along the Oregon coast as well. So if a tsunami is going to hit, what happens? Uh, what's gonna happen is uh, the tide is gonna go out uh, much farther than, than normal and you typically have, uh, depending on where it's coming from, if it's coming locally, uh, which is going to be somewhere maybe 70 to, 70 to 100 miles off the coast, you're typically gonna have about 20 minutes before that tsunami is gonna come in and come inland, maybe 25 minutes at the most. Now that might sound like a long time and it might be plenty of time for some people, but uh, if you have to drive to safety, just consider obviously everybody else is gonna be evacuating, probably gonna get stuck in traffic. Uh, it might even just be fastest to go on foot. Uh, so understanding the evacuation routes when a tsunami does come is going to be really important. Most places throughout the Oregon coast, uh, if you have enough time, if you have 20 minutes, even if it has to be by foot, you can get pretty far and uh, probably get to safety. You're just going to want to know uh, where those evacuation routes are. I've included a, a link in the description that will give you evacuation routes for anywhere along the Oregon coast. So how often do tsunamis happen? Since 1854, there have been, according to Oregon State's website, 21 tsunamis. Two of them have been uh, damage-causing tsunamis. There was one back in 1964 uh, near Alaska, and then there was that, that tsunami, if you remember, in 2011 uh, from over that earthquake in Japan. Those two tsunamis out of the last 21, I guess, created damage uh, along the Oregon coast, but may maybe nothing that, that you might have heard of. So. Um, tsunamis do happen, uh, I guess, fairly often or maybe more often than some people might know. It's just that they're usually not that big and they're usually not big enough to create damage. So not all earthquakes off the Oregon coast are going to create tsunamis and uh, not all fault lines are going to be the same. It's just that one fault line that you've probably heard of, the Cascadia subduction zone, that, that is, is the concerning one for us. So not all earthquakes will create a tsunami and uh, not all tsunamis are going to create damage, and not all fault lines uh, are going to be the same. It's just the uh, Cascadia subduction zone, it's just that fault line that, uh, that's the concerning one that's uh, potentially going to create an earthquake that will create a tsunami uh, that people are referring to as the big one. So the Cascadia subduction zone is a 600 mile fault line 
that runs from the northern Oregon coast uh, to British Columbia, Canada. There have been 41 earthquakes in about the last 10,000 years as a result of that fault line. Over the last uh, 10,000 years, they've uh, occurred as frequently um, as 190 years and as infrequently as almost 1,200 years on average closer to about every 300 years, uh, maybe 320 years. The last big one from the Cascadia subduction zone was in 1700. So that's why you might hear uh, some talk about us being due because uh, it's been over 300 years since that fault line uh, created a major earthquake. And that earthquake uh, caused the shoreline to drop a couple of feet and created a massive tsunami. So how do scientists know this stuff? Scientists know this stuff by studying geological records and digging down into the soil to look at geological sediment and rocks where they can see signs of past earthquakes. Apparently there's some Native uh, American legends that also support this uh, last major Cascadia subduction zone earthquake of 1700. I couldn't find anything on that, but uh, if you know anything about that, feel free to uh, weigh in in the comments. Okay, so the Cascadia subduction zone hasn't produced an earthquake since 1700. Uh, in that time, it's just been building up pressure and tension. There, these two fault lines, where the Juan de Fuca plate is uh, subsiding under the North American plate, have slowly been building up pressure and tension, and at some point, that pressure and tension is going to give up and uh, the plates are going to slide quickly uh, together to create this rumbling effect known as an earthquake which will then displace the water above and create a, a tsunami. Now there's some scientists that have predicted that there's about a 37 percent chance, so about a one in three chance, that we will have one of these mega earthquakes from the Cascadia subduction zone in about the next 50 years. And I'm not sure how they came up with that math given that we're right just past the average of 300 years and the longest span between these earthquakes was 1200 years which gives gives me comfort of all the kind of numbers and statistics and all the all the stuff that I looked at before making this video knowing that uh, at one point there was a, a 1200 year span between these major earthquakes that made me feel a lot better but uh, I, I don't know how they came up with that math you know, so that, that those, I'm sure there's some scientists out there that, uh, that have a different opinion, but um, that's, I think, maybe kind of the consensus, though. We're a little bit past the average, so because we're past the average time, people expect that that big earthquake is going to come at any moment. And the real scary thing is that uh, this earthquake uh, would not just be limited to the uh, Oregon coast. It's supposed to be felt as far inland, like for the state of Oregon, as like Portland. And, and Portland would even experience damage from an earthquake that's uh, 70 to 100 miles off the Oregon coast. So quite a, quite a ways away. But yet they say it's going to do damage that, that far away. So that kind of gives you an idea of the magnitude of, of this type of earthquake. So if you're worried about this, you should be prepared. If you're not too much of a worrier, I mean, you should at least know where the evacuation routes are. Aside from the evacuation route link, uh, I'm also including a link where you can find a map of any stretch along the Oregon coast that will show you the tsunami zones. So maybe if you don't live here and you're thinking about moving here, you can see the areas that are going to be affected. And if you're really into preparedness, I'll also include a link for a 48-page evacuation drill guide. Now, when you look at these maps, what the inundation maps are going to show you is how far inland the tsunami will travel. There's five levels, small, medium, large, extra large, and double XL. The dark purple is the small, the lighter purple is the medium, the mustard sort of color is the large, the dark yellow is the XL and the light yellow is the double XL. You'll find that key on the map as well. So that the double XL being the largest possible tsunami expected. So let's just take one map for example. I've chosen uh, a map that will show us most of Astoria. Now Astoria is not very flat. So as you can kind of see here on this map, uh, a major tsunami is not going to impact a lot of Astoria. It's going to impact some of the downtown right there, which, which is actually um, on the Columbia River. So it'll impact some businesses and some, some residential areas. But um, a lot of Astoria is going to be outside of the tsunami zone. Now, if we contrast that with the seaside, for example, which is just to the south of Astoria, most of seaside, a lot of seaside, is going to be right at sea level. So for that reason, even a, a tsunami that's not the biggest possible tsunami um, could impact a lot of seaside. And that's what you're kind of seeing in the map there with that uh, purple and that light purple. 
the yellow, again, those are going to be higher areas that it's going to take a bigger tsunami to reach. So what do we really learn about tsunamis here? Well, uh, there could be a major tsunami along the Oregon coast today. There might not be one for hundreds of years. Might not be one for a thousand years. Might not be one ever. I mean, we just started learning about this stuff, uh, I think, back in the 70s. Um, you know, for all we know, that uh, Juan de Fuca fault line uh, is stuck and caught up on something and uh, isn't ever going to create a major earthquake that will create a major tsunami. It probably will. It sounds like it's going to. It sounds like it will at some point in the future here, but uh, we, we just don't know. I think at a bare minimum, it's just best to be prepared, like I mentioned, and know those evacuation routes. If you're in a place or planning to buy a home in a place that could be affected, that's in the inundation area for major tsunamis, eh, maybe you keep a, a couple of life jackets at your house. It's not going to hurt. Um, I'm sure the people in Japan uh, that were hit by that tsunami in 2011, uh, there's a lot of people that died there. And uh, I'm sure just having a life jacket, if you see that how that tsunami came inland and just took everything away, just being able to have a life jacket would have probably made a big difference for, uh, for a lot of people that weren't able to, uh, either they didn't have an evacuation route or they didn't know where the evacuation route was. You know, So for all those people, uh, just being able to stay afloat is uh, going to make a, a big difference in your safety. And if you're wondering about Japan, if you're wondering about like what is, um, you know, what happens if uh, one of these major tsunamis does hit? Well, according to uh, one of their their websites, um, it took them about two and a half years to mostly rebuild and and mostly replace everything. Uh, their train system sounds like it took the longest. That took closer to like ten years to get fully um, back up and running. But most everything else was. Uh, Kind of fixed and replaced within two and a half years which sounds really really fast quite frankly uh, but you know that that information is coming from them so wouldn't be end of the world if a, a tsunami hits um, obviously would be dev devastating a lot of people would be affected um, but uh, you know we would rebuild of course um, and go back to uh, go back to life as normal at, at some point i'm sure so if you have any questions about the, those maps um, whether it's the inundation zone map or the evacuation map or really just kind of tsunamis in general. If you have any questions about moving to the Oregon coast, you can call, text, or email us. Or like I've always mentioned, schedule a link, uh, schedule a Zoom with us uh, in the description. Always best for people coming from out of town that can't meet us face to face. I hope this video kind of helped you um, to get a little bit more information about how often tsunamis happen, should you really be worried about them, or how worried about them should you be. And if you are worried about them, all those links in the description should give you enough material to kind of make a decision as to maybe where you want to live or maybe where you don't want to live and uh, kind of decide the level of risk that's uh, most comfortable for you. And if this video helped you, uh, give us a like. It lets us know that we're doing a good job. Again, comments are open, so if you want to comment in and let us know your thoughts on tsunamis and earthquakes and the big one um, off the Oregon coast, feel free to weigh in and uh, reach out to us with any additional questions. Take care, everyone.